Hey everybody, Pastor Daniel Parker here. Welcome to this special online-only broadcast tonight. As you know, tomorrow night we'll be having trunk or treat for the kids here at the church and in the community. And we've been in a, uh, a series uh, since September called Valley of Decision. And we've even had a couple of services or meetings called Decision 2024 where we had uh, uh, Bishop George Bloomer come and he spoke about the spiritual warfare that's going on during this time, during this election season. And we even had congressional candidate Lori Buckout come over. And we interviewed her as well as the another uh, great congressional uh, incumbent by the name of Pastor Ken Fontenot. And so we know it's a political season. We know that it's a very, very critical time right now. Uh, President Trump is coming to Rocky Mount tomorrow, Kamala Harris will be in Raleigh. Uh, so North Carolina is a state that they are truly fighting for. And so I wanted to come online tonight and just give you biblical principles, give you good common sense information, but as well as my own personal opinion and how I feel uh, about this election. Uh, so... I just want to bow our heads real quick and pray over this uh, illustration tonight. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I pray that every person that uh, tunes in to this broadcast tonight will have an open mind, Lord God. And Lord, if they're, if they're wavering in any way, if they're on the fence about who to vote for, who not to vote for, and what do they need to do as a Christian concerning this political season? God, may their uh, eyes be open tonight. May their heart receive tonight. And if their mind needs to change, then let it be uh, so tonight. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Know that everything I do tonight is not to uh, pick at anyone, to make anyone feel less than, um, or, or attack anyone's uh, preferences or opinions. But I do believe that this is the most crucial and detrimental election, especially the presidency, that we've ever ha had in our lifetime in the history of America. So it's very, very, very important. So what I'm going to discuss to you, with you tonight, none of what I discussed with you tonight are conspiracy theories. They are all facts. Now, if I listed everything on here that uh, you know, that it came from. I didn't, I didn't even have enough room to get everything on here. In fact, I got some more stuff on my phone, and my phone's in the dressing room in there. And I, uh, so I didn't even have enough room to put it all on this board. Um, but I wanted to get started first by, before, we're going to go to the biblical last, okay? But the first thing we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about policies that have been implemented or policies that will be implemented because the candidates said that they would be if they were elected president, okay? And so we're going to first go with the people versus Harrison Walls, okay? The people of America, the people of North Carolina, the people of Nash, Edgecombe, and Wilson County versus Harris and Walls, okay? The first item here is Biden named Kamala Harris the border czar, uh, as soon as he began to implement four years ago his open border policy, which has now to date allowed 15 million people into our country illegally. All are unvetted. Many are on the terrorist watch list. Many are uh, military-aged men. They're coming from all over. I even heard today that there's a place in Iowa, in Iowa, that only has 3,000, 3,500 people there. 3,000 migrants have, have come on to that town, and it has changed everything. Crime is out of control. We've heard about the, the Venezuelan gangs that have taken over uh, hotels. We've talked about the, uh, the high pricey hotels that illegal uh, migrants are allowed to stay in, and the government is paying for all of it. Biden named Harris the border czar. That meant she was to oversee for the Biden administration the border. And she never even got anywhere close to where the, the, all the stuff was going on at the border. She went down there one time. She laughed about the fact that she hadn't been there. And she went down there one time, and she was nowhere close to where any of 
of the, a lot of the stuff is going on at. And so, but now since she's been running for president, her campaign is saying she was never the border czar. That's a flat out falsehood because every news outlet at the beginning of the Biden-Harris administration said that Joe Biden named Kamala Harris as the borders are to oversee it. Now she's denying it. And many believe that she's denying it because she knows what a mess it is. And she doesn't want to be attached to it. Well, she can't help but attach to it. She is Joe Biden's vice president. She is still the current vice president of the United States. And he named her the borders are. And so even if she denies it, she is the border czar. And you talk to the families that live on the border and how they're having to guard their homes and their homes are being robbed and they go out in their storage shed and there's people sleeping out there and trespassing in their yards and the women who are being raped and the people who are being kidnapped and so many terrible things. Kamala Harris is in charge of that border. All right. Gave free benefits to illegal immigrants. We know that. They get cell phones. They're even getting driver's license. They are getting free hotel rooms. They are getting free uh, medical treatment. All the money that has been spent on this disastrous border policy drain an organization, a governmental federal organization known as FEMA. FEMA is in place whenever natural disaster happens, whenever hurricanes or tornadoes and, um, you know, these types of things ravage a city, ravage a territory. That money is in FEMA to go in and help. Well, guess what has happened? They've drained it so badly that there's not any money left. And something I don't have up here that I couldn't fit is the most slow, non-compassionate response to a hurricane and a flood ever in the history of our country happened right here in our own state just a few weeks ago in western North Carolina. And had it not been for Elon Musk sending the Starlink system, those people still wouldn't be able to communicate with the outside world. Uh, he had to do it. The government has not showed up like the government should. I'm not saying there's not some boots on the ground, but they have not done what they're supposed to do in a situation like that. And the response was terrible. It was delayed. It was dragging. And I believe that it cost people their lives that were holding on. And so that is a direct result of them draining FEMA and there not being any money left to help people who have just suffered from a natural disaster, has said in countless interviews that taxes must go up. They must go up in order for uh, the Harris campaign to accomplish things or the Harris presidency to, to accomplish things. But now says she will lower taxes for the middle class and only raise the taxes for the rich. Can I tell you an inside deal on that? None of them like that will ever raise the taxes on the rich. You know why? Can I tell you a secret? Because they're rich. They'd be raising the taxes on their own selves. Okay? And so they will always say we're going to raise the taxes of rich people, but they're not going to do it because they themselves are rich. All right. We'll continue to keep pipelines shut down, no drilling, which causes gas and oil prices to go up. When gas and oil goes up, and gas comes from oil, so when gas goes up, when fuel goes up, guess what? Everything goes up. Food goes up because the food has to be packaged, put on a truck. It has to be put on a plane. It has to be put on a boat. All these things have to have fuel. Fuel. And so that has been the cause of the current inflation, okay? That's been the cause of inflation. Not COVID back at the end of Trump's uh, presidency. No. The nation was able to bounce back from that. Simply, people just went back to work. 
things started flowing again. Prices went up because gas went up. Fuel went up because we're not drilling our own resources. President Trump has researched and said in Alaska there is more oil to be drilled there than there is in Saudi Arabia. But instead, the Biden administration has cut out and shut down all of our pipelines, and we're buying everything from the Middle East, making them richer, making us poorer, and causing uh, fuel prices to go up because we have to pay whatever they say pay. And so when fuel goes up, everything goes up, and that is the root cause of inflation. As far now, if you've heard anything about this, you feel free to put it in the comments section if you want to, but I have not had or heard any plan from Harris or Waltz concerning regulating the FDA, uh, the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA needs to be regulated because some of the, the, uh, the components that are in our processed foods are very deadly. It's causing heart diseases, Alzheimer's, dementia, cancer, um, autism in children. It's all running rampant like never before. And it's because of what we are taking in our food, the, what they're spraying on the food, what they're putting on the food, what they're putting in the food to make the food last longer and, and, and have good color and, and, and not go bad so soon so it can stay on a shelf way longer. Those things that are preserving the food to last longer, when they get inside us, they begin to wreck our body. That needs to be regulated. Also, I'm also seeing that a lot of organic food, vitamins sold on television or the internet that are so good for you. The FDA never regulates any of that. And so if that were to happen, we could probably get prescriptions for some of these great vitamins out there that you're having to pay 50 and 60 bucks out of your pocket uh, to get because you can't get the nutrients in the food anymore. It's not coming in the topsoil. It's, there's so much processed food. Obesity is like never before. And it's simply because the FDA has gotten out of control. They have to be regulated. There's also no plan to audit government efficiency because the government is not efficient. The government is legendary and well-known for wasteful spending, spending hard tax-earned dollars on very uh, silly things, on things that do not put the American people first. So if there's no plan to audit the government efficiency, that means they don't want you to know what they're doing with our tax dollars. Now, Tim, uh, I think his name is Tim Walsh. Tim Walsh's own family has come out and they're, for their support, not for Waltz and Harris, but Donald Trump. His own family that knows him says they love him, but that his views are so radical and so wrong, and what it's done to the state of Minnesota that he's been governor of is so terrible that they would hate to see that happen to America. That ought to tell you something right there, folks, when the man's own family won't endorse him, and instead they're endorsing Trump. All right, so uh, the Walsh's only, uh, his own family won't vote for him due to radical political views. Harris says this, she has no regrets from the Biden-Harris presidency and cannot think of anything that she would do different. Listen to that now. Think about what your life has been like for almost four years. Think about what it has taken to fill up your gas tank every week, what it takes to fill up a grocery cart every week, the things you put back on the shelf that you used to buy regularly without even thinking about it, and now you're having to kind of prioritize all of these different things. How much supplies are, if you've tried to build anything, all of these different things. Harris says she has no regrets from the Biden-Harris presidency and cannot think of anything she would do differently. All right, continues to run ads that have been fact-checked and proven false. What do you mean? They continue to tie Trump and Vance and all Republicans to uh, something that was written up 
by a right-wing organization called the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation are not a part of the Trump campaign. The Heritage Foundation has not been endorsed by Trump nor J.D. Vance. The Heritage Foundation uh, developed a document called Project 2025. And a lot of it, most of it is just a wish list. It's a wish list of what they'd like to see happen in the country. And many of the things in there are good. But some of the things uh, are, are what they would call far right. Okay? And so Trump has denounced it. He's saying, I, I, I don't necessarily reject it, but I don't know what all is in it. I've not read it. It's 900 pages. Yet the ads keep coming. And they're now, they first started calling it the Republicans Project 2025. Now today, I recently saw a brand new ad today, and they're finally going all the way with it. And they're, they're saying it's Trump's Project 2025. If you ever want to know what Trump's plan is for America, it's not Project 2025. He didn't write that. He wrote Article 47. Because if he was to be elected president, he would be the 45th and 47th president of the United States. And in Article 47 is, in it, is a laid out plan of what he wants to do for America all the way to day one, right on through his presidency. So with that, even in the debate, she said things like uh, he wants to ban abortion nationwide. He has nothing else to do with abortion. We'll talk about that here in a moment. There's nothing else he can do or will do about abortion. Abortion, uh, Roe versus Wade was, was overruled, taken out for the national level. Now it's up to the states. It depends on what state you live in to whether or not abortion is legal or not legal or whatnot. Um, they know. I, I know people right now that they're concerned about the economy um, but if they lean left wing, they are very, very, even if they go to church and are a Christian, they seem to really be adamant about the whole abortion thing and wanting a woman's right for her own body to, to stay in effect. That should not be any Christian's main focus. And I'll talk more about that later. But uh, it was said in the debate that there have been children aborted at birth. She said that was a lie. That's not a lie. There's been, I thought it was only two cases. There's been six cases. Six cases where abortion was taken all the way, was, was done all the way up to uh, time of delivery. And the bill that was written on it allowed for that. Uh, also, when they go back and they say things like Trump said that the KKK, the Nazis, the skinheads, the white nationalists, all of these were good people back during the, the, the riot in Charlottesville. If you go back to the video where he said that, in the next sentence he says, he repeats himself, and he says, like I said, there was good people on both sides, except for, he called himself, except for, because the good people he was talking about were the people up there, uh, protesting against Civil War monuments. Some people wanted it taken down because to them it meant hate. Others wanted it to stay up because to them it meant heritage. Nobody was trying to be racial. There was just some people wanting to preserve history because history is something you ought to learn from, not ignore. And then others were saying, but this is offensive to me and my race. So he was saying there was good people on both sides. He said, but except for, I have nothing good to say about white nationalists, Nazis, KKK, skinheads. There's nothing good about those people, and I totally denounced them. They kept that out of the video. They showed the world edited video. And, and so many people have thought that, that Trump was defending racist idiots like the KKK. Well, with that said, there's been a lot of, they continue to run ads on things that have been fact-checked, proven to be falsehood, yet they still run it anyway. They've even said about Lori Buckout that she wants to cut Social Security, that Trump wants to cut Social Security. Trump wants to cut the tax off of Social Security. 
He wants to take the tax off of overtime and the tax off of tips. He wants to take the tax off of retirement. Those are the things he wants to cut are taxes, not the benefits themselves. All right, here's another one. They've been very weak on foreign policy. They've not sat down with Vladimir Putin. They've never gone and met with Kim Jong-un in uh, North Korea. They've never gone and uh, met with Xi Jinping. They, uh, Kamala, when, when uh, Benjamin Netanyahu came to the, co- uh, the, to the Capitol, to the, to the Senate floor, the Congress floor, the House of Representatives, she wouldn't even meet with him. So they're so weak on foreign policy. And so look at all the wars that have started. Russia has invaded Ukraine. Israel is being attacked from all sides. And now they're talking about China may go ahead and invade Taiwan before the end of the year. Also, my final thing here, and I have more, but I couldn't fit it all right here. It's important for you to understand and remember this. Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris is the current vice president. And she knew that Joe Biden was having mental decline. And whenever she was asked about it, she always defended him. Well, that's fine if you want to defend your boss until you can't defend him. But the thing is, if he's so mentally declined, she has the opportunity right now to be the most powerful vice president to ever be in office. And all the things that she's, all the good things that she's saying are good, that she deems is good, that she will do for the country, she will do them as long as you vote for her to be the president. Why do we have to wait for her to become president for her to close the border now? Why? Why do we have to do that? Uh, I, to me, that border being open in the name of trying to help people escape bad governments. But they have not protected the United States, and that is something they have to take an oath for, to protect America through threats, domestic and foreign. In my opinion, this is my opinion now, I believe that that open border is an act of treason. It's an act of treason because they are not upholding their vow to protect America. When they... When the Harris, Biden-Harris administration ordered the withdrawal from Afghanistan, it was done so hastily and so unprepared that we empowered the Taliban with weapons, $80 million worth of weapons that they took control of. They paraded them up and down the streets, and now they've taken Afghanistan back over. A war that was fought by our men and women for 20 years. The reason they fought that war was to get rid of the Taliban. Now the Taliban is back in control. Can you imagine the hopelessness that those veterans feel, especially the ones that are wounded, their bodies destroyed, they can't hardly do anything for themselves, but at least they could sit back and know that they helped liberate a country and keep terrorists from being in control of it. They don't have that hope. Because they've empowered the Taliban by their weak leadership. Now, this right here, Bible, no Bible, church, no church, Christian, atheist, whatever, just as an American citizen, these are common sense facts that you need to know that Harris and Biden have done and what Harris and Waltz say they will do, okay? Let's not forget Uh, Also, that Tim Waltz right now is putting tampons in boys' restrooms. Him and Kamala Harris both want men to be able, biological men, to be able to participate in women's and girls' sports. This is happening. Trump says he's going to shut it down. This is happening all across the country And girls are being overlooked for scholarships. They're losing. They're being hurt. They're getting their nose broken by uh, boys' elbows on the basketball court. All kinds of terrible things are happening because of this. And it's just, it's, it's, 
crazy right now. Um, when you think about men, biological men, how many of them that want to say they're a transgender, but really they're a predator that wants to harm women and little girls in restrooms? So we have that. Now let's go over here and look at some common sense stuff concerning the people versus Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. Here's what they have said. On day one, they will close the border, okay? I tell you what, I'm going to stand right here and get right here. That better? We're gonna, they're going to close the border. They're going to close the border, and they're going to deport all illegals, especially those uh, that are convicted felons released from foreign prisons and those on the terrorist watch list. Okay, when it comes to this right here, this is what Trump means when he says, I'll have to be a dictator for a day. Because when you see 15 million people getting deported, that's going to look awful. And they're never going to show you all the military-aged men. They're never going to show you the convicted felons that's been let out of prisons all across the world when they found out that America's southern border was open. And they just they emptied out their insane, insane asylums. They emptied out their prisons. And now they're here. They're not going to show you that. They're going to show you women and children crying. Uh, they're not going to show you those that are on the terrorist watch list that are here planning something. But on day one, Trump says he will have to clean up what they've messed up. He will have to fix what they've broken. He says he's going to drill, baby, drill. Making us energy independent again, which lowers gas and oil prices and decreases inflation. I heard today uh, uh, one of the political analysts saying that if he's able to do this, if he gets elected and he gets in there, you will see food costs come down dramatically just like that. You'll see gas prices come down just like that. Clothes prices will come down. Building supplies will come down. And people will be able to afford to live again. All because we drill and we make our own resources instead of making everybody else rich. The reason that left-wingers, Democrats, don't like to drill is because they believe it's bad for the environment. But I'm not an environmentalist, okay? Now, I pick trash up. I don't pollute. I don't litter. But that is an indoctrination because, see, God says how the world's going to end, not man. God says how the world is going to end, and God says he's going to be the one to do it, not drilling oil, not by pollution. I mean, my goodness, there's nothing we can do. All the cars in the world, all the smokestacks, all the smog, all those things, God says he will end the world the way he deems to do it. And we know that by reading the Bible. He's going to make all things new again, right? He'll never flood the world again. I've been reading uh, the story of Noah's Ark here recently and uh, the rainbow which the LGBTQ community has taken as their symbol. They stole it from God because that is his sign. That is his promise that he'll never flood the earth again. But he'll decide how the world ends and how it begins again not environmentalist. All right, here's the next thing. He's going to put tariffs. Somebody out there say tariffs. All right, tariffs. Now, Kamala's ads say that Trump's going to put a shipping tax on everything that's imported into the United States. What she fails to call it is a tariff. Not a tax that you and I as consumers have to pay, but a tariff that companies have to pay. If they're an American company, but they move their manufacturing over to China, Okay, Trump wants to put a tariff on anything they're trying to bring into the country so that if they are an American company, they will bring their manufacturing back to America and not, okay, if they do that, then guess what? They don't have to pay the tariff no more. Guess what else they get? They get a tax cut to keep them here. That tax cut is what the left is trying to say that Trump is trying to cut taxes for the rich only. Not for the rich citizens, but for corporations. 
If he gives the corporations a tax cut, they'll keep their manufacturing in America. If they keep their manufacturing in America, guess what happens? People have jobs. Amen? So we'll put tariffs on imported goods on imported goods from U.S. companies that manufacture in foreign countries. This encourages U.S. companies to manufacture here, which brings more jobs. Okay? You got that? So they take that word tariff, they turn it into tax, and make you think it's something you got to pay. All right? But uh, let's go to this next one. We'll give tax cuts. I, I kind of said that already, but let's go through it. We'll give tax cuts to corporations in the U.S. so they will stay here, which protects U.S. jobs. So we'll bring back jobs if they've gone, and then we'll protect the jobs. We'll bring the jobs back with the tariffs. We'll protect the jobs with the tax cut on the corporation, okay? we got to remember something about this guy right here. He's not a politician. He's a businessman. He knows how to broker and negotiate. He knows how to run things like this. And he has said, wait a minute, I did tariffs back when I was president, and it was working. Let me do it again. All right. Here's another thing they say they're going to do. They're going to negotiate peace through strength. Not by sending people $150 million to behave themselves with their missiles, but by saying, hey, I've got a drone over your house. If you don't quit attacking our soldiers, I'm going to blow you to kingdom come. That's called peace through strength. And I'm saying that because he did that one time to a foreign leader. We'll negotiate peace through strength with Ukraine and Russia war and support Israel in destroying all terrorist factions who oppose Israel them okay because they could take out the head of hezbollah and hamas and they'll just appoint a new head they did today hezbollah has a new leader so they have to utterly destroy them all right now here's a great appointment right here he has already said this guy's got the job rfk jr rfk jr is the son of the late uh bobby kennedy who was assassinated he's the nephew of the late President John F. Kennedy, who was assassinated. RFK Jr. was denied Secret Service detail, even though he's running for president. He was denied uh, to even be a part of the Democratic primary, which caused him to go independent. He then uh, left the, his bid for the Independent Party and went and is now supporting Donald Trump. So he's still a left-wing Democrat, but he's going to work in a Republican presidential cabinet for the betterment of the country. That's what you call coming across the aisle and being bipartisan, okay? RFK Jr., he's a big fitness guy, okay? I know he has a lot of trouble with his voice and talking clearly, but this guy is jacked, okay? He takes really good care of himself. He eats all organic. He doesn't eat any processed foods, and he is is all over this stuff, and he is going to regulate the FDA to get all this junk out of our food, okay? I'm talking your Lucky Charms, your Cap'n Crunch, okay? Your Cheez-Its, your Triscuits, your Doritos, all those snacks and cereals you love to eat. He wants to get all the deadly poisons out of them so that we can live long, okay? So that is a great, great, great thing right there. That's a generational blessing, put right into the government. All right, also, Elon Musk, smartest guy in the world, richest guy in the world, right? This guy invented Tesla electric cars. He invented PayPal, okay? He is a genius. He's invented SpaceX. They're doing things that NASA's not even doing, all right? Elon Musk will head up the first ever governmental efficiency board where the government gets audited on a regular basis to make sure they're not embezzling money or wasteful spending taxpayer money. That is fantastic. That's groundbreaking. We've never had any, any checks and balances like that in government. But in addition to that, here's something I'd love to also see Elon head up, which he could delegate, and that is how to protect America from cyber crimes, how to protect individual individuals from cyber crimes, the people who are hacking people's uh, house titles and hacking people's accounts 
being able to stop that, plus the cyber war of like Russia or China attacking our grid and that kind of stuff. I would love to see him head up a committee and a team or a, a task force to overlook that too. But definitely Elon Musk is going to be heading up our first ever government efficiency board. And I think that's fantastic. Here's something about Donald Trump. He has survived two assassination attempts on his life. One, he was nicked in the ear uh, during a uh, political rally. He just happened to turn his head to look at a screen that he was going to save for later. And we pretty much know the hand of God was upon him. There was another uh, attempted assassin that was hiding out in the bushes at his own home golf course where he lives. He survived two assassination attempts. He's had his home searched at gunpoint. They were there to get documents that he was not supposed to have, but he, he could have. They say he wasn't supposed to have, but he was the president of the United States. By law, the law said he could have those documents. Joe Biden had documents, too, from when he was Barack Obama's vice president. But only the president could have those documents, not the vice president. But what did they do to Biden? They went over and knocked on the door and asked him could they get those documents out. But with Trump, they had orders to go in with guns blazing. Now, luckily, the family wasn't home. Reports say they were all up in their bedroom and their personal items, just ransacked the house. Such disrespect for someone who has been a president. All right, he's facing 700 years in prison for all kinds of things. You tell me somebody waits till they're 78 years old to start breaking all these laws and doing all these crimes. They got 90 indictments on him, and he just keeps going. They didn't have a problem with him when he was a Democrat funding Democratic candidates. But when he left the Democratic Party and became a Republican and then ran for president, Everything came at him, all because he wants to be the president of the United States. People are seeing that in droves. People who have never voted for him have seen that. And because of that, they're realizing mm, they, sh they come after him too hard, too much. They've made it too obvious that he must be better. His policies must be better. So when it comes to the people versus Harris Waltz, they fail. They fail. I give them a failing grade tonight. But when it comes to the people versus Trump Vance, all of this is fantastic for America. No matter if you're a Republican, a Democrat, a Libertarian, an Independent, whoever you are, you don't have to vote for the party you've always voted for. These are great policies for America. All right, so we've talked about the common sense stuff. Now let's talk about the biblical stuff. Am I still in focus here? We good? Okay. All right. I want to thank my sound man, Braden Langston, for coming in tonight and, and uh, broadcasting this special uh, meeting. Y'all tell him thank you in the comments. Thank you, Braden. All right. So now we're getting into the Bible. These are things that you, we may have already discussed when it comes to the common sense things, when it comes to the people verses, what people, whether they're saved or not, whether they're Christians or not, whether they've ever read the Bible, what they're concerned about. Some of these things, you, you can't, you can't um, separate the common sense stuff, the common sense consumer stuff, citizen stuff from the biblical, all right? But some of it you can, okay? So let's go right here. The Bible versus Harris and Waltz. All right. The Bible tells us in the book of Leviticus that it is wrong. It is wrong to shed innocent blood. Okay? That God hates a prideful heart and the shed blood of the innocent. It doesn't get any more innocent than a baby. I, for one, as a pastor and as a Christian, I don't want any abortion. Any abortion. Okay? Okay? But I also can't stand in judgment if someone's 12-year-old's been raped and they don't want her to have to carry that baby. I can't stand in judgment for that. And so 
Trump and them have, well, I'll get into them in a minute, but we do know that there are radicals in the Democrat Party that believe in abortion up until full term. That ought to horrify every human being, whether you're a Christian or not, whether you're for abortion or not. Even if you are a pro-choice abortion advocate, no one should be for full-term abortion. That is horrible. And Tim Waltz is for that. And the radicals that are in the Democrat Party are for that, and it has happened a handful of times so far, but it is time to shut it down. Because that is even, that goes past what abortion ever was. It's just outright murder. And we see how God would send Israel into the land of Canaan and he would send them into places where they were worshiping the God of the prophet, the, the, the idol of Baal and Molech, and they were sacrificing children, throwing the firstborn babies into the fire. God hated that. He hated that. He hates children being hurt like that. And he would judge them by putting his hand on Israel and causing Israel. Even if Israel was a smaller army, they would go in and utterly destroy them because they had the hand and the power of God behind them. I would not, as a child of God, want to have anything to do with this right here, folks. That's why I put it at the top of the list. That's why I put it at the top of the list. They won't admit it, but it is happening under their watch. All right, here's another big one. This is going on right now, okay? Intelligence agency that's under Biden and Harris right now has leaked information to Israel's enemies, empowering Israel's enemies. What does the Bible tell us? What does it tell? What did God say to Abraham in the book of Genesis? He says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. If you are leaking information to the enemies of Israel, then you are not standing with Israel. So we know that's a really biblical, that's a big biblical um, issue right there. The next is open borders. Sanctuary cities, because we know that sanctuary cities, that's being taken advantage of. Not all of these people are refugees trying to escape uh, terrible governments. Many of them are fighting age men. But the Bible, I want to go look at how many scriptures there are on why it's important to protect your nation's borders. And there's more than I could even list up here. The Bible is chock full of scriptures on how important it is to protect your borders. You don't have a nation. You don't have a country if you don't protect your borders. They have not been protecting our borders. Trump says one of the first things he's going to do is shut down the whole sanctuary city program because it's not been nothing but a big sham. It's, it's bankrupting cities. New York, the New York mayor has just thrown his, and he's a Democrat, threw his hands up in there and said, I can't do it no more. They're overrunning our city. And so it has turned into an unmitigated disaster, all right? Um, Pro-Palestine and Hamas. You say, why, you, uh, why do you mention Hamas in there? Because Hamas governs Palestine. The people of Palestine voted for Hamas, 60-40. Majority of the people wanted Hamas to run their government. Hamas is a terrorist organization. They are not a government. They are terrorists. And they have attacked Israel last year on October 7th in one of the most horrible ways imaginable. And instead of a politician being concerned about that, they're more concerned about the fact that Israel has fought back. And that is because there are people in the government on the Democratic side that are in a little group called the Squad. One of them's name is Rashid Tlaib. She is from the Gaza Strip. She's from Palestine. So her heart is with them, and we get that. But she despises Israel. Her religion teaches her to despise and hate Israel. She does not want any peace with them. That's why she won't even discuss it. She wants them to destroy it. And we have people who think like her 
serving in our government. The rise of anti-Semitism across the USA. Anti-Semitism is racial, prejudiced, and hateful bigotry towards Jewish people. Whether they're from Israel or not. If they're Jewish, they hate them. They are anti-Semites. It's being indoctrinated into our children across uh, Ivy League campuses across the nation. It has sparked an uprising, and they are not shouting it down. Now, Biden, I'll give him credit. He shouted it down, and uh, he made some enemies with the squad. They don't like him. Kamala's not shouting it down because those are her buddies right there, the squad, all right? Here's another thing. Kamala supported rioters and looters who destroyed minority-owned businesses. When George George Floyd lost his life to what we now know was an overdose because he took so much drugs that he had on him. He took them. Uh, But the way that he was arrested really looked bad. It was terrible. Uh, He said he couldn't breathe. The, The police officer's knee was on his neck. It was just a horrible, horrible time. And uh, because of that, riots took place and cities burned. The, and what happened is you actually had people who were protesting because a man of color had been killed, yet people of color were killing people of color in that because the people of color who owned their businesses didn't want their business to get destroyed. They were for the protests. They were for marching the streets and saying, hey, we got to do something about bad cops. We got to do something about racist cops or whatever. But wait a minute. Don't burn my business down. Don't burn down what, you know, I made it. I, I, you know, I'm still here in the community, but instead of uh, expecting somebody to do something for me, I've got a business here, whether it's a dry cleaner or a, a store, convenience store. And they were burning down the stores. They were looting the, the, the stores, all of this. And she was in full support of it and even put a, 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 a hotline up or a tip line or an email or a website where she would help bail people out of jail. And they were breaking the law, folks. They were burning down police precincts. They were burning down businesses. They were looting and robbing stores when they were supposed to just be protesting. Protest. That is a a constitutional right that you have, that you can protest, but you have to do it in peace, not in violence. So that's one thing she did. Here's a big one that she doesn't ever admit to, but the interviews are out there. Just go look at them. They're even in the the ads now. She wants taxpayer-funded sex change surgeries for illegal immigrants crossing over and inmates who are in prison. An illegal who has just walked all the way from Guatemala to be here. That's the last thing we need to be doing for them, okay, (laughs) is funding a sex change operation. Also, inmates in prison need to be getting rehabilitated from the crime they committed, not be operated on with your tax dollars to change their genitalia. That is outrageous. That is radical. And people who are finding this out are saying, no, Kamala, no. Their campaign's first, and let me uh, also tell you something else that I don't have up here. They are for... Uh, gender-affirming care for minors without the parental consent. That means a young person who's underage in the care of their parents can go to a guidance counselor, a woke, liberal, radical guidance counselor, and get hooked up with a woke, liberal, radical doctor, and they could go ahead and start giving them hormone blockers and all these things to change them and not even tell their parents. That's what Waltz and Harris stand for. And that is a disgrace. Can you imagine being a parent and finding out that not only is your child a transgender who's just telling you, but for the last couple of years they've already been in the process of changing their body's chemistry and you didn't even know about it, but, you know, someone else did? Like these folks? All right. 
Kamala's first campaign, uh, her first, her, her campaign's first presidential ad, of all the things that she could, of all the people, of all the groups, of all the factions she could link herself to, not the common people, not American citizens, not the hardworking folks of America. No. Her first campaign ad running for president was with transgender drag queens sitting at a table with her. That's who she wanted to appeal to first. People who I believe, my opinion, my discerning spiritual opinion, people who are transgender are suffering from mental illness. They need mental help. They don't need to go mutilate their body or dance and prance around children or read children books. They don't need to run up and down our streets in parades half naked. She is with them. Her, she never discusses uh, one thing that a lot of people get really, in, in fact, even left-wing journalists, they get very frustrated with her because she will not do an interview. They went the longest time. She went like a, a month or so after she said she was running for president and would not do any interviews and still points out no real plan that she has for America. But here's her sole plan. Here's her go-to every time she's pressed. She runs solely on the hatred of one man. One man. Her hate for Donald J. Trump fuels her entire campaign. And we can't let hatred be behind anything. The very thing she accuses him of, she's guilty of, which is Marxism 101. All right? Told Christians recently at her rally that they were at the wrong place. Some young boys went to her rally, and they, let, they yelled out, Jesus is Lord. And they did that while she was up there passionately talking about how she would defend the right to kill children. They saw that as their opportunity to yell out, Jesus is Lord. And she rebuked them and told them they were at the wrong place. That ought to have told every Christian where she stands. Neither Waltz or Harris have shared publicly their faith but have made appearances in churches. But Tim Waltz is now declaring that he is of the Lutheran denomination and has been quoting some scripture. So they have been to church a little bit. Says he's a Lutheran. Um, and, you know, Kamala does laugh a lot and has a, seems to be a joyful person, so I can give her a little bit of credit for that. All right? So we'll give them some, we'll give them, we're going to give them some points here. We'll give them a point for a Lutheran denomination. She went to church a couple of times over the last few weeks, and she laughs and smiles. Okay. All right, they got a failing grade with the people a while ago, but as far as Bible, we gave them three points, okay? We gave them three points, all right? Uh, we're filled with grace around here. Now let's see how many points Trump and Vance can get when it comes to the Bible. Y'all ready to close this thing out? We got some folks watching, Braden. It was the... There's some people tuning in. Good. All right. Now let's see how Trump and Vance shape up with the Bible. Let's see if they can, if they can't get more than Kamala and and, and uh, Tim Waltz. Now that's going to be a problem. So let's see what happens. All right. How their policies line up with the Word of God? They're pro-life. Pro-life. Okay. Trump says he's pro-life except in the case of race, excuse me, rape, incest, and the life of the mother. That's a lot of folks believe that. A lot of folks that do not want any abortion, they understand if it's in the case of rape, incest, or the mother's life. But I've also said, hey, I'm a pastor. I don't want there to be any abortion. I know people who have confided in me and told me that they were a product of rape. And they grew up to be amazing people, kingdom people, uh, people who have changed lives and have advanced the kingdom of God. So, but I understand, and that's where Trump is. That's why 
when they say he wants to do an abortion ban, across, they do that as a scare tactic to get people's minds off the open border and off the inflation, okay, and off of bad, weak farm policy that has caused the whole world to be on fire right now. They keep going back to women's rights. They call abortion, they don't, they don't like to say abortion, they like to say the reproductive rights of a woman, all right? Trump's never said that he would ban abortion. He can't. The Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, and the decision goes back to the states. If you live in a state, and that state decides to write an executive order that bans abortion, then you go over to uh, another state that hasn't. It's up to the states, and it matters how you vote in the state. As a pastor, I'm pro-life all the way. I don't want any abortion. Trump and Vance are pro-life as well. Even Bill Clinton back in the day, who was a Democrat, even Bill Clinton used to say abortion should be legal, it should be rare. Uh, what was the other thing? Safe, legal, and rare, okay? That's what he said back in the day about it. Look how far we've come from safe, legal, and rare. Full-term abortion. That's radical. That's radical, okay? Kamala and Waltz are way more radical than Joe Biden has ever been. The most radical candidate they could possibly put up for president of the Democrat Party. So they're pro-life. Here's another thing. Here's something that Trump did. He appointed three judges to the Supreme Court of the United States, and they overturned Roe versus Wade at a national level, I believe, as a pastor studying the Bible for 20 years. That took the curse and the judgment of God off of our nation as a whole because it was overturned on a national level, giving it back to each state, and each state gets to decide. So really, when it comes up to abortion and all the banning abortion scare tactics that the left keep putting on them, it's, it's a done deal. It's been overturned. It's back in the hands of the states. Nobody's going to do anything about it. But here's what Trump will not allow full-term abortion in any state. And no decent human being, even if you are pro-choice and you believe in abortion, no decent human being should believe in full-term abortion. That is savagery. All right, next. Here's something Trump did on day one when he was elected. Biden reversed it when he came in. It's in effect right now. But Trump defunded Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood, they set up a lot of their clinics in minority communities, and they do not advocate for life at all. They always turn the mother towards abortion. Abortion, abortion, abortion. And if they're funded by the government, then that means those abortions that happen through Planned Parenthood are funded by your tax dollars. Trump ended that when he came into the White House, uh, the Obama Biden presidency had that in effect. Trump shut it down. As soon as Biden and Harris got in there, they reenacted it. So right now, right now, unfortunately, our tax dollars, my tax dollars, fund abortions. And I hate that. He says he's going to defund it again. I praise God for that. Says he will close the border again and finish the wall. Right? He built 500 miles of it. He's got to keep on building. Here's another thing he did that I think was good. Again, the Bible says we are to protect our borders. Right? All right. Nehemiah, what did they do? What did they do with Jerusalem after the Babylonian invasion and when um, the nation of uh, what was it, Cyrus? He, he let the people come back, and that was um, the, meet, the Persians, excuse me. Nehemiah built a wall around Jerusalem to protect them, right? They had to have a hammer in one hand and a sword in the other so they could fight and build. So these are biblical things, closing your border, protecting your border, putting a wall up at your border. Here's another biblical thing. Trump, when he was a president, he recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. 
He put the American embassy in Jerusalem. He moved it there to recognize the holy city as their capital, okay? Jerusalem is the city on a hill. It is the shining light. It is what the, God's calling the new heaven and earth, the city that's going to be in the new heaven and the new earth after the millennial reign. It's called the new Jerusalem. So that was very prophetic that he did that. And he helped broker the Abraham Accords with Israel and Jordan and other Middle Eastern countries that would come to the table and truly wanted peace. Those who didn't come to the table don't want peace because they hate Israel and they want Israel destroyed. Let us not forgive that. Now, if that's not successful foreign policy, I don't know what is. He was warned, President Trump was warned by Barack Obama on the day when the White House was turned over to President Trump and his wife and Michelle and Barack Obama were leaving. Barack Obama said, keep your eyes out, keep your eye, keep an eye out on the leader of North Korea, okay, Kim Jong-un. He said, I don't, he's going to do something really bad. Trump went over there, got out walked by himself over the line and shook the man's hand with nobody around protecting him. And that little man, they call, he calls him Rocket Man, he behaved himself. <laughs> and maybe he'll behave himself again, okay? So that's the foreign policy is so much um, stronger. Here's another one. Here's a good thing about them. Vance declares Catholic faith. He even had a movie uh, made about him called Hillbilly Elegy, and he wrote a book called Hillbilly Elegy. He's the American dream, okay? He came from nothing. His mother was a drug addict. His grandma raised him. He put himself through school. Um, where did he go? Did he go to Yale or Harvard or somewhere like that? I think he went to Yale. He became a senator, and now he's on the verge of possibly becoming the next vice president of the United States. This guy is the common man and he is a catholic and he agrees that jesus is king because at his rally some kids shouted out jesus is king and instead of calling them down and telling them to hush or be quiet or telling them they were at the wrong place for that like kamala did he said amen jesus is king trump declares protestant christianity i've read stories about how he was raised he had an aunt that was in the Pentecostal holiness faith. But he himself uh, is a Protestant Christi uh, Christian. Um, political advisors he has are Paula White, Jensen Franklin, David Jeremiah, Robert Jeffries, uh, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, even Bishop George Bloomer is one of his advisors. Many, 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 many. He met with uh, 90 uh, black evangelical pastors before he ran for president. He asked them what they wanted, and I've been told that everything they asked for, he produced. They wanted opportunity zones to get uh, more people of color out of unemployment, off of welfare, and, and have a job. He did that, and black unemployment, minority unemployment, was at an all-time national low. It had never been that low. Um, they wanted historical black colleges to be funded federally. He got it done for 10 years, something that no Democrat president ever did. He did it, okay? Um, other things like, um, oh, man, the list goes on and on. I can't even remember all. Oh, prison reform. And I've seen this myself from dear friends I have, uh, brothers in Christ I have that are minorities. And they've told me their stories. They've served time. And they would do the same thing that a white man would do, but go to jail twice as long or three times as long. And that was wrong. That was racism in the justice system. And so there has been problems there. He did prison reform, and all of a sudden people started getting out of prison who had served their time, they were in there for marijuana. Uh, you know, when I'm pulling 15 and 20 years for selling marijuana, and now, you know, it's in candy now and being sold at your local gas station. People started getting out of jail. 
having another chance at life. Fairness to them, okay? Now, now fentanyl, people who are pushing fentanyl, Trump believes that you know this kills people. They ought to get a death penalty. But uh, misdemeanor crimes where people are unfairly prosecuted, people of color that go to jail twice as long, three times as long, that's wrong and it's unfair and somebody needs to do something about it. And these um, black evangelical pastors asked Trump, can you do it? And he did it. He did it. All right? But he declares Protestant Christianity. But here's another thing. He's the only president in decades, in my lifetime, that speaks the name of Jesus Christ in public. I've heard George Bush. I've heard Ronald Reagan. I'll say God. God. And they were, they were people of faith. I think George Bush Jr. and his father were Methodists. I don't, I don't remember what Ronald Reagan was. But they would all say God and they would pray. But they would pray to God. But they would never declare the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus' name is the name above all other names. There's no other name under heaven in which man can be saved. And this rude, crude jerk of a man sometimes by the name of Donald J. Trump, of all the people that would declare the name of Jesus, he has. The name that every celebrity is so afraid to say. Every politician is so afraid to say. Trump's not afraid to say his name. He has an evangelical advisory board of pastors of all Christian faiths, of all colors, serving on that board. Amen? So he cares what they have to say. He cares about their point of view. He cares about their opinion. He cares about their input. He cares about their biblical knowledge. He wants their prayers. Here's the other thing. He regularly allows and calls upon multiple pastors to not just pray for him, but to lay hands on him. And it's been said that Donald Trump is a germaphobe. So somebody that's a germaphobe, it takes a lot for them to let folks lay hands on them. But he believes in the, in the book of Acts, the laying on of hands. He believes in that. And he lets people lay hands on him regularly to pray. I don't know about you, but all of these things biblically, for me as a Christian citizen, these are all great things. So let's see how many points he gets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine. That's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh-oh, I think the choice is clear, folks. From a biblical standpoint to a common sense standpoint, there's only one choice for president. And I've had to say this on my own Facebook page on a live stream video. But tonight I'm taking a bold stand, and I'm coming on to my church's page. And I have members here, and I don't know who all my members are voting for. I don't want to lose any of my precious members. I have people here that I, I don't believe in once saved, always saved, but I have members who do, and I want them to stay here because we can still, as long as we agree that Jesus is Lord and he died and rose again on the third day, we can still get along. And I can still get along with any member of my church that votes for Kamala Harris. But if you're on the fence and you haven't voted yet, if you've already voted, fine. But if you haven't voted yet and you're on the fence, I'll tell you this. If you can't bring yourself to vote for Donald Trump because you believe he's a horrible, horrible person, then there's nothing this preacher can say to sway you. But if you have an open mind and an open heart tonight, I'll say this. Can God use somebody like Trump? Yes. He used King David who had so much blood on his hands that he would not even allow him to build his temple, a man who had committed adultery. He used a man named Samson who was filled with lust. His whole life revolved around lust. Trump has done some bad things. I know. He probably had an affair. He's probably had affairs. He's a very rich, powerful man. And when you have that much clout, that much wealth, and that much power, you can literally own people. And... I'm not saying that he does. I'm not, I always thought, hey, if Trump runs for presidency, he was in the New York 
uh, limelight, you know, what in the world could he have been privy to? Well, guess what? Sammy the Bull, the Bull Gavarno from the famous John Gotti mob said that they went to Trump many times trying to bribe him, and he could not be bought. This is coming out of the mouth of a mobster, a gangster, a real gangster, a real mafia hitman. And so why would a man that's not got any good in him, why would he risk 700 years in prison, getting shot at twice, having his home ransacked, being on an airplane every day going here and there? Why would he risk that if he didn't have some good in him that wanted to do good for the country? And a lot of the rhetoric and name-calling that he was doing earlier on, he's kind of backed up on a lot of that. A lot of it he does now just poking and picking and making fun and performing because he has been a celebrity. He had a, he had a hit t- TV show that stayed on the air for 13 seasons. It was a top-rated show called The Apprentice, and he gave it up to become president because he'd been thinking about it for years, and he waited to see just how bad of a direction the country was going to go in, and he finally said, I think I can offer some. I have common sense ideas that I think can fix things. And they, start, they turned on him. The very people who hate him now had their pictures made with him years ago with their arms wrapped around him. They loved him when he was funding their campaigns. But the moment he left the Democratic Party and became a Republican, they turned on him. They have called him a bigot. They've called him a racist. They've called him everything. I'm not saying that he's a super Christian. I don't know if he prays every day. I don't know if he's been baptized in Jesus' name. I don't know if he's been filled with the Holy Ghost. But I do know this. He'll declare Jesus' name. He'll let people pray for him. And he wants what's best for America. And at first, I wasn't on the Trump train. My daddy was. I wasn't. I didn't like how rude he was. I didn't like the names that he called people. But when it came down between him or Hillary, I knew I had to go with him. And I've seen him evolve. I've seen him change. And I saw the country doing good. But that don't mean if he gets elected that, that turmoil won't happen. Because it will. You see... Here's another big difference in Trump and Kamala. Trump's biggest supporter, his richest, most wealthiest supporter, is a man named Elon Musk, who is changing the world with products that make our life easier. Elon Musk, Kamala's biggest, wealthiest supporter, is a demon-filled man by the name of George Soros who has helped fund other countries and caused them to go into bankruptcy, has caused them to become socialist countries where everything went down the drain, and then he's able to go in and buy up all the market shares before they crash, making him wealthier and wealthier. He's done it to Venezuela. He's done it to Greece. He's done it to all kinds of countries around the world, and America is his next target, and he's using the Democrat Party and the elites that back it to do it. So this isn't just about Trump versus Kamala. This is Musk versus Soros. This is evil versus good. This is right versus wrong. And people are coming up out of the Democrat Party all over the country. Tulsi Gabbard has left it. RFK Jr. is going to be on Trump's team. And people across America, I have talking to brothers of color who told me I voted for Biden last time. The news made me feel like Trump was a racist. I know now it's not true. I'm voting for Trump this time. A pastor would never get on live stream and advocate like this if it wasn't that important. If Trump wins... We're going to enjoy this final jubilee before the return of Jesus. If Trump loses, we're going to pray and we're going to be ready for the return of Jesus. I want there to be an America here before Jesus returns. The Bible does not guarantee us that there will be an America. It's up to us to make that decision. We, the people. And so I'm telling you, the Bible points to this decision common sense 
of the American citizen consumer points to this decision. And the decision is Trump Vance. Let's pray. Father, I pray that everything I've said tonight, illustrated and pointed out, has been received, that people understand and realize what's at stake. God, I ask right now if there be any offense in my brothers and sisters out there, and they hold it against me, let them know that boldness, boldness has to be spoken in love, and that when people are going in the wrong direction, there's no greater way to love them than to warn them that they're going in the wrong direction. I pray, Lord God, that every member of this church will stay here. I pray, Lord God, that everyone that disagrees, that sees this broadcast shared, will take into account what I have said. They will open their mind and even change their mind if need be. And God, we ask that you have your hand continually upon our country. Don't hold us liable for the godless things that have been put into practice and passed into law. But God, help us to align our country's governmental political policies with your word in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Bring the kids out tomorrow night for trunk or treat, a great safe environment, a safe alternative to what the world celebrates on Thursday. And this Sunday at 10 a.m. marks my 16th anniversary as the pastor of this wonderful church. And if you're looking for a church that's unafraid, if you're looking for a church that's bold and loves everybody, I invite you to come and be a part of what we're having this Sunday as we celebrate 16 years. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this, and good night.